Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sky, and if you are new here, here are a couple of random facts about me. Despite me hating winter and any cold season, I live in jumpers. Literally, I'd wear a jumper in summer. And I also have an irrational fear of milk in a glass. I don't know why. It just makes me really uncomfortable. But this video today is going to be super fun because it's going to be my full review of the Kaleidos Fresh Fantasy collection. Yes, the collection did come to me in this suitcase. Yes, I'm going to keep this suitcase for the rest of my life. Kaleidos did send this collection to me in PR, but this collection includes two new Futurism palettes. I'm actually wearing one of each on my eyes and I'll show you guys that close up in a moment. Kaleidos also came out with three contour palettes as well as well as another one of their Lucid Lip Gloss in the shade Dramatize. I have a lot of thoughts on this collection, so let's get started. So let's talk about the palettes first, since these are the ones that I think most of us were most excited for. There's Futurism 6 Luna Lavender and Futurism 7 Sashimi City. Let's talk about Luna Lavender first. I am wearing each of these palettes on my eyes today. As you can see, I did a nice little two-toned moment. I'm using Luna Lavender on my eyes today. However, I did have to pull in another shade. I'll explain why. This is what Luna Lavender looks like on the inside. It has two duochromes and four mattes, if my math is correct. It's a beautiful little monochromatic purple palette with a couple of nice cool toned browns. So let's talk. Both of these palettes retail for 24 US dollars, which is about 18 pounds. I'll put the conversion and the prices up here in case I'm incorrect. Let's talk about the matte formula first. I usually adore Kaleidos' matte formula. I'm a really big fan of it. It's one of my favorites of all time. So easy to work with, really pigmented and blendable. And that can be said for these two browns here and this purple here as well. This lilac shade right here, it's a little bit more sheer. So you do have to build it up quite a bit. It's more of a pastel. And I don't mind that. I'm okay with working with it. However, this shade right here, this middle purple shade, <sighs> it was an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> I'll actually put a picture right here. I was originally going to do an all matte smoky eye with a pop of one of the shades on the inner corner. I tried to pack the purple on my lid and uh, <laughs> you can see in this picture right here, it just turned patchy, really patchy. It would not stick to my lid. The purple shade would not stick to my lid at all. I had to take off this eyeshadow look three times, four times, and my eye is kind of aching because of it, because my eye does not like removing and reapplying makeup. But this purple does not build on top of other eyeshadows well. Even when you apply your eyeshadows dark to light, it does not work. I tried doing it in that photo that you saw earlier and it did not work. Using them from light to dark doesn't work either. This shade is just a really big dud, and you might be thinking, but Sky, that lid shade, that matte purple that you're wearing right here, that's really nicely pigmented. If it's not from Luna Lan Lavender, where's it from? Escape Pod. <laughs> I actually had to dip into Escape Pod to use this shade Mardi Gras right here for that purple lid shade. Even when I've tried to wear this purple in different ways with different primers, different techniques, it just did not last on my eyes. The rest of these mattes last all day on my eyes. No trouble creasing, fading or anything like that. But this purple is just a big dud in this palette. And for a purple palette called Luna Lavender, when one of the purples is crap, now let's talk about these two shimmer shades right here. These are the two duochromes. This shade right here, I think it's called Dreamscape, is kind of like a nice lilac lavender to gold sheen. It's really pretty. It actually reminds me a lot of the highlighter in the Rose Duo that they came out with earlier this year. It reminds me a lot of this shade. This shade could be a bit more brighter. It's not as bright as I'd like it to be, but it's really nice. It is a really nice inner corner shade, a good lid shade, works really well. Moon Roof right here is a gorgeous periwinkle purple duochrome. It's so stunning. However, I will say this shade is quite crumbly. It's quite crumbly and flaky, so you really do need to wet your brush or use a glitter glue or do both when you use this shade, and it is best applied with either a wet brush or a finger. I still think this shade is stunning, and I still really do like this palette Luna Lavender. It's just that I can't call it a favourite of mine because of that one purple shade. It's quite a big dud, and I mean, when you take away this purple, it's not as impactful, is it? Overall, if I had to rate this palette out of 10, I'd give it 
I'd give it a solid 7. It's really good. It is a really good palette. I will actually show you guys comparisons of the purples in here compared to Escape Pod, and I'll do that right now. I'll do swatches on this arm right here because I have had a lot of questions of how the purples in Escape Pod compare to Luna Lavender. So first up, I'm going to compare Soiree from Escape Pod to the light purple in Luna Lavender. This one right here is Soiree from the Escape Pod palette, and this one right here is Luna Lavender. Escape Pod... Luna Lavender. These shades to me are quite different. The one in Luna Lavender is more of a pink undertone and Soiree is more of a blue undertone. So these two aren't dupes to me. I'm actually going to build up the swatches a little bit just so you'll be able to see them a bit better. So don't mind me. There we go. I just built it up a little bit just so you can see the color a bit better. Now I'm going to compare Mardi Gras from Escape Pod to that purple in, a, in Luna Lavender. So this one is Mardi Gras from Escape Pod. This one is the Luna Lavender one. Mardi Gras, Luna Lavender. These two are semi-similar, I'd say. Mardi Gras is more of a pink undertone, whereas the one from Luna Lavender is more cool toned. These two aren't dupes to me either, but they are fairly similar. I feel like on the eyes they'd give off, they'd give off a similar effect. So I'm just gonna build up those swatches as well. But I'd say that Mardi Gras works so much better than the one in Luna Lavender. It's such a gorgeous warm toned purple. Probably my favorite warm toned purple in my collection. Excuse the way that I'm holding this, but the two Movi Browns aren't in Escape Pod. So now I'm gonna compare the metallic shades. The lighter duochrome from Luna Lavender doesn't appear to have a dupe in Escape Pod, so I'm just going to swatch that right here. I'm just gonna build up the swatch a little bit so you can see it, because it is quite a light shimmer. The shimmers in Luna Lavender are more like toppers to me. They don't really hold their own as their own eyeshadow, in my opinion, unless you w use a glitter glue. In that case, they would work really well just as their own. So that's from Luna Lavender. Space Oasis from Escape Pod. Moon Roof from Luna Lavender. This is Escape Pod. This is Luna Lavender. My lighting is kind of messed up, but these two shades are somewhat similar, I'd say. I'm actually gonna turn down the brightness so you can see them a little bit better. But this one has more of a purple periwinkle base. This one's kind of more of a, I don't know. You can, you can see it on camera. It, the undertones are different. These two are more so similar, but the undertones are different. And just for fun, I'm going to swatch Cosmic Cabaret from Escape Pod as well, which is the last purple. As you can see, totally different to the rest of them. So in my personal opinion, if you already own Escape Pod, Luna Lavender won't have any dupes per se, but I do prefer the purples in Escape Pod. I have to say. But I will say that I really love the addition of these Movi Browns. They actually work really well in this palette. It's just this shade that I'm not a big fan of. Okay, I've blabbered on enough about Luna Lavender. Now let's move on to talking about Sashimi City. When I initially first saw this palette, I immediately thought, okay, I'm not gonna like this one that much. It's just browns. I don't wear browns that often, and this is more so my color scheme. This is quite shocking to me, but this is definitely one of my favorite palettes in my collection now. There are no dud shades in this palette. All the mattes blend beautifully, pigmented, easy to work with. They're not patchy at all. They last all day on me. I have absolutely no issues with this palette. And the duochromes in this palette, these two duochromes right here are absolutely magnificent. Oh my god, I don't know what happened with Luna Lavender, but this one really takes the cake for me. This shade Pink Ginger is like a rose gold pink with a like bronzy shift to it. If you have the single from Davina called Tucana, it is a dupe of this shade, which is really nice because if you just wanted this shade from this palette, then just get that one from Davina. I personally don't own that one, but from what I've seen in swatches, they are similar. And this shade Penthouse, oh my god, it's one of my favorite shimmers in my collection. This is basically like a light yellowish gold with a green bluish shift to it. It is so intense and so beautiful, and I love that they have a mustard in here and a salmon color. It's really a neutral palette with interest to it. This is definitely in the top five eyeshadow palettes for me. Is it in the top five? I need to do another eyeshadow palette ranking video. 
because my collection has changed a lot since then. I will say if I could change one thing about this palette, I'd probably get rid of this brown right here, only because we do have another dark brown in here and they do tend to look somewhat similar on the eyes. I'd probably exchange this shade for maybe like a deep mustard. So basically like a deeper version of this color, like a really nice rich mustard color. That would make this palette like amazing. So overall with these palettes, I highly, highly recommend Sashimi City. Definitely I'd give this one a 9 out of 10. I also love that the packaging on the outside does reflect what's on the inside, but yeah, I'm really genuinely shocked that I love Sashimi City so much more than Luna Lavender. I still like Luna Lavender, it does serve a purpose in my collection, but if I were to recommend you to get just one of these, Sashimi City, even though me, a bitch that doesn't like wearing brown eyeshadow, this is absolutely amazing. I think it's my favorite neutral palette in my collection, actually. So that concludes my review on the two palettes. Now let's move on to the contour powders that they've come out with in this collection. Kaleidos have come out with three shades in their contour palettes, and I really hope that they come out with more because this formula is absolutely fantastic. Before I talk about the formula, let me just show you the colors. So this one is the cool and light one right here. I will say that cool and light is very true to name. It is very light, very, very light, perfect for pale skin. The one that is my shade is the warm and medium. I will say I don't understand why this is called medium because do I look like a medium skin tone? I don't think so. But these are the two of them compared. I really feel like you can get away with using either of them. Just It just depends on your undertone. This one is slightly deeper and warmer, but ever so slightly. And the final one is the warm and deep, which looks like this, which I am actually quite impressed with that this is actually deep. A lot of contour palettes and bronzers nowadays, whenever they say deep, it's like, it's not that dark. But to me at least, just by looking at this, this is pretty dark. I'm gonna see if I can hold all three of these up all together. This might be a bit precarious, but these are all three of the contour palettes together. As you can see, there's quite a big difference between the medium and the deep, which I really hope that they do expand on this in the future because, I mean, that's a massive jump. That is a massive jump. So I really hope they come out with more shades for medium skin tones and more for deep skin tones because I absolutely love this formula. Oh, and in case you are curious, I am gifting these two away to family members and friends because I have no use for them. I've got one shade, that's all I need. But let's talk about the formula on this one. I did mention this in a current favorites video. Same with Sh Sashimi City. I believe that was actually my previous video, so clearly they're favorites in my collection. This comes with a highlight shade, a contour, and a bronzer shade. Gonna be completely honest, I'm never gonna use the contour. <laughs> I personally don't contour my skin or my nose or anything like that. I just, I don't know, I used to contour, but now I've just kind of gotten over it. I'm just lazy. I just want a bronze and that's it. I really do like this shade for setting underneath my eyes. It is nicely pigmented and these powders are really finely milled. Like they are so smooth to the touch and silky and they are just so nice. They are really nicely pigmented. They aren't overly pigmented. Um, so you can't really go overboard, but I am wearing the bronzer today as you can see like it just Looks really nice You can go in with a light hand for like a lighter look and you can really build it up to make it more intense And I really do like that it is really user-friendly this lasts all day on my cheeks No fading no creasing none of that stuff It is just a really good bronzer powder and I really do think that if I wasn't sent this in PR I definitely would have purchased this. Yeah, I highly recommend the bronzer palettes. They are really really nice Kaleidos, please come out with more shades because this is fantastic And I really would like to see them expand more in the future and last but certainly not least, we have a lip gloss in this collection. This is the Lucid Lip Gloss in the shade Dramatize. I have tried out their lip gloss formula before with their Escape uh, pod collection. This is the shade Hypnotize. And as you can see, in the bottles they may look similar, but Hypnotize is like a, uh, like a medium berry with a gold sheen in it and some blue in it as well. It's really nice. And Dramatize is basically like a strawberry type colour. I'll actually apply a bit more on my lips right now, but it's got a beautiful like gold and pink shift in it. It is really nice. Just applying more because I like it. <laughs> this formula is really thin, really moisturizing. It almost feels like a lip oil to me at least, which means that they aren't the most long lasting on your lips, but they do give off a nice sheen. They have a li little bit of color to them. They're not too pigmented, which I really like. I don't like when glosses are overly pigmented personally 
just not a big fan. But this one is really nice. I don't know, I can't pick a favourite between these two shades because I love them both for different reasons. I personally wear Hypnotize a little bit more because it's a bit more unique to my collection, but I really do love Dramatize and I have been wearing it a bunch. I really do recommend Kaleidos' gloss formula and I do want to buy more of these because they are really, really nice. They're just not, they're not like all-time favourites. Do you know what I mean? They aren't holy grails to me. If I had to rate the gloss formula out of 10, I'd say, I'd say it's like a solid 7, 8. It's really nice, it's just not that long lasting. Now the bronzer palettes, I actually forgot to rate these, I do apologise. I think rating them out of 10 is actually really useful. I don't know, it's, it makes sense to me. But I'd easily rate these about about like an 8 as well. The only reason why I wouldn't give them a 10 is because I would never use the contour shade. I just mainly use this for the bronzer and the brightener shade. And that concludes my review of the Kaleidos Fresh Fantasy collection. I know I'm quite late to reviewing this. Um, thank you so much Kaleidos for sending this to me in PR. It's just a lot of life stuff happened. I was hoping to get my review up really early but mental health tings. But yeah, let me know if you picked up this collection. How do you enjoy it? Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. The way that a neutral palette has made me so excited and happy, I think is the biggest plot twist of 2020 for me. <laughs> Full details of this look are already on Instagram, which is Beauty by Sky right here. Do follow me on there if you want to see more makeup content from me. You can also follow me on my other social media. I have a personal Instagram account, I live stream on Twitch sometimes, and my Twitter are all linked down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here. We have a nice time here just talking about makeup and life things. It's a good time. As always, stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.